Here on Superhero Academy Day 5, we have a notes packet that says new information, not top secret, as we're going to go over some new material, things that we're going to cover between now and the end of the school year, but that you may see on the standardized test, which is something that we're just going to cover today. We're going to do an intro of many things because we're going to spend the next time from this state assessment all the way to the end of the school year covering these things. So here in front, you can see volume of prisms, where we have this formula here that we're gonna use lots and lots and lots of times here. But the main thing would be is today, we're just gonna do an overview again. So when we go through this, you can slow the video down if need be, or rewatch it because it's just an intro. We'll spend many days on this. But that big B is very important. It does need to be a capital B because that stands for area of the base. But if you could do me a favor and circle up the word base, and if you could put down a little note to yourself, that is the main shape pushed all the way through. Now, in class, I'll hold these out in front so they're not so flat and two-dimensional here on the screen or the page, and you can see them in three dimensions. But we got a base and the height, again, a big B, meaning the main shape here being this squarish rectangle, which is both there on the top and also there on the bottom. There are two of them, just like here, this base it's the main shape pushed all the way through as a triangle. There are two of them on top and bottom. That's why it is a prism. There are two of them. So when you have a box like this, oftentimes we already know the formula is length times width times height. Length times width times height to find the volume, which you could just put little time signs there. But if you would, please, here in your notes, please write down 9 times 4 times 6. Then grab your handy-dandy calculator, type that on in and you get 216. Now, since we're dealing with volume, that's the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure, thus the label is going to be cubed. Now, I could talk about this formula, V equals big B H here, but a lot of times that just gets confusing here because if it's a box, you just multiply the two numbers. You could do that where you could pick this rectangle here as your base, and then do your length times width, the six times four, which gives you 24. And then this height is the distance between this rectangle on the right and the rectangle on the left, the other number we haven't used. And if you took nine times 24, you would find that you would get the answer 216 as well. So you can use this formula, big BH will work for any type of prism, but if it's a box, we're used to just saying length times width times height. Go ahead and do that. Same thing here. If you're familiar with the volume of a pyramid, or rather, excuse me, of a prism, you can find that, although we can do it two different ways. So let's take a look at using the formula. So when we look at our formula, our formula is V equals big B H, where big B is the area of the base, the main shape. So when you look at this, the main shape that's been pushed all the way through is this triangle. Notice how there's one here on the front and there's one on the back. It's been pushed all the way through. So you don't have to outline it right now, but you'll see when we get to this later on that we're gonna be outlining so we can focus everything in here because now we need to find the area of this triangle, which is a little b, times h divided by 2, that's base of the triangle we have highlighted, 4 times the height, 6, divided by 2, mental math or a calculator approved. That's where this number 12 comes into play. And the life hack would be this h, what number haven't we used? The 5, what's the distance from the triangle in the front to the triangle in the back? That is 5, so that's going to be our height. Take 12 times 5, and that gets us 60 millimeters. Again, volume is amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. Thus, why we've got that three, that cubed on our label. We're doing an intro, so we're going through here a little quicker than normal. Slow the video down if you need to, re-watch it, but we're just trying to give you an opportunity to have a good chance at maybe guessing the right answer or having an idea of how to get to the right answer instead of just going, I don't know, and skipping it. So that's the goal today, just an introduction. So we have a blank slide here because that one is the end of our volume of prisms. So now when you turn the page, we have volume of pyramids. 
We're going to spend a long time and we're going to talk about this formula here and we'll explain why it's divided by three later. But to make the video short, as it's just an intro, this is the volume of a pyramid or a cone. So if you need to put that down up here too, or cones, because anything that comes to a point like this, where we have everything coming up to this point, that makes it a pyramid or a cone. And that's why we are going to divide by three because it's not a full box. So sometimes like this one on a standardized test, you're going to say, Mr. Walls, how do I solve this? And I'll have to tell you, do the best that you can. But now I can show you. If you say, Mr. Walls, on the standardized test, you say, why is there a B here? That doesn't make any sense. Like, am I supposed to do something with that? I will tell you, do the best that you can. But today, again, doing a quick little intro, notice the base hard to see sometimes on your copy, your base of this pyramid is actually a pentagon. It is not a fun formula to figure out how to find the area of a pentagon. So don't do it. Don't look for it. They told it to you. So we literally just plug that on in for the big B, the area of the base times the height. Well, what's it from the tippy top down to the bottom? That's eight. Then you take that and divide that by three because that's what the formula says. Notice now that we've had a little quick intro, maybe you can get this answer if they ask it to you in a state assessment. So you take 24 times 8, hit equals, divide it by 3. That's where we get 64. And now our label, the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. So we're going to take that and cube it. Why a big B? What's the H? What the th what's, why is there a 3? Why is that in the formula? Great questions. Today is an intro. So we're going to spend a day or two on many of this, even a day two and reviewing. So we're just doing an intro today. Notice it says find the volume of the cone. So our volume is big B H divided by three. Big B stands for not just the base, but the area of the base, the main shape. It looks like an oval and I explain in class and show why, but it's supposed to be a circle. So to find the big B, we need to find the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, where we use 3.14 for pi times the radius, which is from the middle to the edge, that's what they gave us, times 9 squared. Please remember, if you have to right away, cross it off. 9 squared is not 18. It's not 9 times 2. It's 9 times 9, which is... 81, so you can type that on in or take 9 times 9 times 3.14 into your calculator. That number comes out to be 254 and 34 hundredths. So the big B is 254.34. And we're going to take it times the height of the cone from the top to the tippy top or the bottom of the tippy top. So take that times 15. Sneak that work right on in there quick, if you might, don't mind me. And then divide it by 3. So you take that times 15, hit equals, then divide it by 3. And that's where we get this number 1,271 and 7 tenths. 1,271.7 inches cubed. Now again, that is because we're talking about the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. That's where that comes from. Volume, we're going to spend time on. This is just an intro. So if you have to find the volume, this page has it. That's why there's a blank here. When you go to the next page, now we spend weeks, like one or two full weeks on surface area. And I show shapes and I have normally in class, I'll have a box in front of me. And I'll talk about this paper box can get smushed or laid flat into this. And this right here, we call this a net. It's just a flat representation, a 2D representation of a 3D shape. Now, that's something that we can do. You can take this box right here and see that we've got a, a rectangle here in the front as the base and then one in the back as well. So you've got those guys. And then you've got this uh, box or rather box or rectangle on the, on the top. So that's right here. And then you've got this guy over here on the side. That's this little guy here. And then the one on the other side is here. And then the bottom in purple is down here. You can break the shape apart into all of its surfaces and find the surface of each one of these 
and then just add all of those areas up and that is one way to find it perfect way otherwise here's the formula we're going to use over and over and over again and it's going to make more sense after we get into that chapter and talk about it but for today please circle up those two base and in fact this needs to be fixed that should be a capital b if it's not in yours already because it's a big b because it stands for not just the base but it's the area of the base or the perimeter of the base it's not a little base a little b meaning a length it's involving the main shape so it's the area of the main shape it's the perimeter of the main shape of the base so let's do that again here's the box you could find the area of this rectangle and this one and so on and so forth but for us today we're just going to go through and we're going to use that formula again it's been intro to us why is there a two and a big b why does it have to be a capital p and a little h what do all those mean we're going to get there. Today is an intro, so here we go. What's the main shape pushed all the way through this figure? We've got a rectangle or a squarish box on one side or the other. So as you're looking at that, you can pick any of them. I'm going to pick this guy here because it's got a box or a rectangle on the right side and one over here on the left side. So find the area of the rectangle length times width which gives us a six times four and that's where that 24 comes into play now go around and find the perimeter of that so this side is six this side is four but do not say this side is nine here that side is also six and this side is four so for today, put in 6 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4. That's where this 10 comes into play. We'll have a more organized method when we get there later on in this chapter. But for today, we're just doing a quick intro. And here's a little life hack, math hack. What number haven't we used yet? It's that 9. What's the distance from the rectangle on the right? to the rectangle on the left. That distance here is nine. So you take that times nine, and that's where again, now you type all that into your calculator and let it do PEMDAS for you. I did that math wrong. I did that today in class. This 10 right here, notice it's great, but if you didn't catch it before, six plus four plus six plus four is not 10, it's 20. So make sure you go back Case in point, from the beginning of the school year, said Mr. Walls makes mistakes. So I'm going to do all this wonderful math, type it in and get the wrong answer. So switch so that one's 20. That now gets me the right answer that I'm supposed to be getting, that 228. Now it's going to be yards squared because we're just talking about surface area. What just happened? Remember, this is an intro. We're going to spend multiple days covering this when it comes in our textbook. But today we're just going through quickly to do an intro. So when they say find the surface area of this figure, instead of going, uh, what? You might be able to go, oh, wait, I remember something. I think we try this. And go ahead. If you don't remember the formula, just find the area of each surface of each shape on it and add them all together. But for me, here we're gonna kinda just intro our formula, two big B plus PH. While we're doing that, we're gonna look at the base. What's the main shape that's been pushed all the way through? There's this triangle on top and on bottom. So that's what's why it's a prism. There are two of the same shapes. So you and I have to find the area of the triangle. Little b, the base of the triangle, and the height of the triangle. So 8 times 6 divided by 2. That's where that 24 comes into play. Because there are two triangles, that's why our formula has the 2 there. Now go and do the perimeter. This side is 8. This side is 6. So somewhere put down 8 plus 6. But don't forget, this guy here, going right here, we need to know that side. And since it doesn't say it up there, look opposite. And that's where that 10 comes into play. 
So when you add those together, that's where this 24 comes into play. And please remember, as per usual, the height. Life hack, math hack, what number haven't we used yet? The seven. The height is asking what's the distance between this top and the bottom rectangle. So as you're, sorry, not rectangle, triangle. So as you're looking up here, you've got this triangle on top and bottom. What's the distance between them? It's that seven centimeters. So you type all that on in, get a little deja vu as you get 216. Let the calculator do PEMDAs again in class. We're going through quick, just like with these notes. When we go over this in our textbook, we will make sure that we can all get 216 centimeters squared. If you need to rewatch or slow down the video, please do so, because here's another blank. That's surface area of some shapes. Now we get into the nice ones. There's not formulas. It goes by a little bit quicker. Probability. This is the likelihood of things that will occur. If they ask you to describe it, it has to be exactly 100 for you to say certain, and it has to be exactly zero for it to be impossible. Meaning this, today there's a 100% chance there's going to be three worksheets with this video. So that is going to happen for certain. For me, it is impossible for me to win the lottery. We talk about it in class and brainstorm some ideas, but with the video, I'll save time and tell you, I don't buy a ticket. It is impossible for me to win. If I do buy a ticket, it is still very, 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 very unlikely that I'll win. And in class, I actually share that stats have shown it's actually a probability that I get hit by lightning twice before I win the lottery. That's the probability. It's more probable that I get struck by lightning twice than winning the lottery. So if I do buy one ticket, I have a chance, but it's not very likely. I can't say it's impossible because buying a ticket gives me a chance. It's impossible when I don't buy a ticket or when there's zero ways to actually win. Now, a number cube is a dice, a die. I show that in class and introduce you to it, but a number cube is just a die, a singular dice. So that's got the numbers on it, one through six. So please write that on in. It's a cube with numbers. So then it says, what's the probability of rolling a number greater than four? Big question, short answer. Two numbers out of six are greater than four, which gives me the answer, one third. Then, down here, as you scroll down, this phrase right here, this whole thing is shortening up a sentence. This is asking about what's the probability of not rolling a 1 on a number cube. So when you go up here and you look at it, we've got how many numbers that are not 1? Well, 5 of them are not 1s. Out of six, can you simplify five sixths? No, you cannot. And down here, you've got the probability of rolling a seven on a normal number cube. Well, there are zero sevens on a number cube, so that is impossible. The probability is zero or zero percent. As you look at it, in class, talk about these. You have a spinner and a coin. There are compound events, or rather what I would say multiple. In class, I make you say multiple. Because since there are multiple events, let's multiply the fractions. What's the probability I spin an even number? So if you can't see, the, we, over here, we've got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The even numbers, there are 2 out of 5 that are even. Take that times the probability of flipping a tails. Now, oftentimes you'll tell me 50-50, which is great, but switch that to a fraction of one half, and then you're welcome to do your fraction dance and get two over 10, which simplifies down to one fifth, or you can cross cancel and then multiply one times one to get your one, and five times one to get five. However you get there, simplify the answer. If there are multiple things happening, multiply. Just like on this last one, if you get a pop quiz or just randomly get a true false question 
and you want to know what the probability is of acing it or answering them all correctly, since there are four questions, put down four little blanks in order to multiply between both of them. So make sure you multiply them. Since it is true or false, there are two possible answers, but only one of them is right. So on the next question, question number two, it's true and false. There's one right answer out of two. Next question, also true and false. One out of two right answers. There's only one right answer out of the two possibilities, true or false, on it. So what is that when you multiply them all out? Be very careful. The tops give you one, but along the bottom, when you multiply, make sure you notice that when you take two times two, that gets you four. Take it times two to get eight, times one more two. That's where we get 16. Common mistake to call it eight, which I like the math, but that's not it. So that is a one out of 16 chance of acing the test or a 6% chance if you do not know anything about it on a four question true false test, you have a 6% chance of acing it. Please again note that this is new material. So you wanna do the best that you can on this. When you're looking at it, today we have some things uh, currently, the way it is set up, wisdom, please skip number seven and eight. So up here, when you see wisdom, if you don't already have it crossed off, please make sure seven and eight on wisdom are crossed off. Sometimes when I make photocopies on integrity, your answer choices for B and D are just not even on the paper. So if that happens, that's why number six has B is 12 and D is 81. I want to make sure that no matter what, you can read what your answers are. And again, this is new material. We did a very quick intro, and that is going to be stuff we're going to cover over the rest of the year. So just do the best that you can on these worksheets and come see me with questions.